I have used the word impedance here and there without really formally defining what it is. So in this video, I'll attempt to explain what impedance is. So I'll start off by telling you, well, we have covered in the time domain that if you have a resistor that has a voltage across it and a current flowing through it, well, simply Ohm's law tells you that I or V is just simply I times R. That's what we have. And now I can tell you that if you move to the phasor domain, okay, what you will get is something very similar. So in the phasor domain, instead of a resistor, you get what we call an impedance, that's Z. And then you get a current, that's an uppercase current, and you get a voltage because these are both phasors. And Ohm's law in the phasor domain is pretty much the same. V is equal to I, but instead of R now, it's Z. So what's an impedance? Well, an impedance depends on which elements we're talking about because this Z can be either the R, the L, or the C. So in here, that's what I can tell you. Well, I can tell you is, here's what Ohm's law is. If I'm interested in the Z, similar to how if I'm interested in R, all I have to do is just divide the V by I. So I have showed you how the elements react in the phasor domain and how to convert them. And these are the correlation or the relationship that we ended up with. And all of them has V and I, V and I, and V and I. They are basically Ohm's law in the phasor domain. So let's figure out what Z is by just taking the V divided by R. Basically, let's isolate everything but the R. So what we end up with is the following. So Z of R, which is the impedance of the resistor, basically how does the resistor act in the phasor domain? Well, it acts exactly in the same way as it acts in the time domain. No difference whatsoever. However, for an inductor and capacitor, it's actually more interesting. So what happens like we started with an L in that time domain, what we end up with as an inductor, it's basically, you can deal with it as an impedance with J omega L, that's a value. So you get the L from the time domain, you multiply by J omega. And similarly with the capacitor, you basically say one divided by J omega C. So this is the impedance of the inductor, this is the impedance of the capacitor. So as it turns out to be that the impedance is actually a frequency dependent element or variable okay so it's not an element it's a variable so it's a frequency dependent in general well for the r it doesn't depend on frequency but if you have a uh, in an inductor or capacitor it does and formally what it does it represents the opposition of the circuit to the flow of current at a specific frequency full of sinusoidal current that is so we're talking about sinusoids in here so, okay, so let me just give you a few of the extreme um, cases. So let's assume that omega happened to be zero. Actually, if omega is zero, the frequency is zero, that means the time is infinity, that means uh, basically the signal doesn't actually repeat. This is actually just as a equivalent to DC circuit. So let's see, what would happen to a DC circuit if I have J omega L? Well, that will become zero. And let's think about it. What I'm telling you in here is the following. An inductor, okay, which I'm dealing with it as, a, as, a, as an impedance in the phasor domain at DC equals zero, okay, this actually has a, a, a basically um, an impedance of zero, which is just a wire. We know at DC the inductor acts as a wire. So at a frequency of zero, this is how it acts. How about the ZFC? Well, ZFC is one divided by J omega C. This is just simply infinity. So if you think about it for a capacitor, it's just an open circuit. That's exactly what we got before. And now I'm telling you, and I'm reiterating that for a very low frequency, very close to zero, the inductor acts as a wire, the capacitor acts as um, an open circuit. Now, if you go to the omega, that is infinity, basically um, a very, very quick um, signal, a sinusoidal signal, what you'll end up with is Z of L is J omega L will be just infinity, and Z of C will be one divided by J omega C, which is basically zero. So as it turns out to be that they flip. So at a very high frequency, the um, inductor becomes an open circuit and the capacitor becomes a very short circuit. And in between them, it's basically some sort of a value and it depends on um, the value of omega. Okay, so a few quick notes in here. So the Z, the impedance, is generally a complex number. I'm saying generally because for R, it's not a complex number, it's a real number. But for Z of L, it's just an imaginary number in here. For Z of C, is an imaginary number. And we will be able to actually combine both of them. Like we will be able to combine a bunch of impedances together, like with combined resistors. So when you do combine them, you'll end up with, well, Z is just simply a complex number. So a complex number has a real part and an imaginary part. So as it turns out that these, um, these have names and the names are the following. So R, like we've done before, it's actually just resistance. Okay. So what's the unit for resistance? Well, it happened to be in ohm. What about X? X happened to be is what we call a reactance, okay? Reactance. 
So, and its unit is also ohm. So as it turns out to be that this unit here is also ohm for an impedance. And impedance is also measured in ohm. Now, a few things in here, I'm basically saying plus or minus J. So as it turns out to be, if you have a plus J, okay, that means actually you can take, you can tell, you can tell it from the table. So plus J, that means this one here is a plus. That means you get an inductive minus J because you can write this as minus J times one divided by omega C. So if you get a positive J, we say that this one here is inductive. Okay. And if you get, well, positive J, you get inductive. And if it's minus J, you'd say it's capacitive. Okay. All right. So this is in terms of the impedance. So what is admittance? Okay. Well, uh, similar to, well, in the time domain, we've seen that we have R and we say, well, um, G, which is the conductance is just simply the reciprocal of R. Similarly, in the phasor domain, we get what we have, uh, what we call Y in here. So this Y is um, what I will call as um, admittance. Okay. Admittance. And it's similarly um, also a complex number. And these two complex numbers basically, well, what's the unit? By the way, what was the unit for G? This was Siemens or Mo. It's the same exact thing. It's basically here is in Siemens. Okay, or Mo. Remember, it's like Mo is the opposite of Ohm. You just write Ohm in the opposite direction. This is um, this is basically Ohm if you write it re right to left. So it's Mo. And as it turns out to be that this is G is actually what we call um, conductance. Okay, conductance. And it's also in Siemens. Okay. And what about B? Well, B happened to be what we call a susceptance. So the way you relate G to Y is the following. Y is the reciprocal of Z. Now, a few comments in here very quickly. G is not the reciprocal of R. And B is not the reciprocal of X. These are actually complex numbers. So in order for you to get the G and the B, you can't tell me, well, if you want 1 over Z, like we're having in here, all you have to do is just take the reciprocal of R, reciprocal of X, and just add them. This doesn't work that way because they're a complex number. What you do is you take the reciprocal of the R, and you end up with two numbers, and these will represent the G, which is the um, conductance and the susceptance. And, of course, conductance, susceptance, they're all in Siemens um, versus ohms and on this direct, or on this side.